I keep of dried pods. I go out and search for things different times of the year. So I look for them and I keep them and I use them for my clay in different aspects. Um, well, for example, I'm, I'm planning to try to do a series of botanical clay works. And I was just experimenting with this, but I think this may be in the future in the making of too, but I'm going to use some of those things I dried because I love the details. Oh, it's just there. And I can, I think I can do my glazes to make this work. Uh, well, now, maybe long that? panels. Maybe, I'm, I was thinking not something too heavy, but it can't be heavy, but some panels where I actually divide and... How do you get that pressed into the clay? Uh, on the when I use my clay roller right here, after when it's pressed out, before I get it to the thickness that I want it, I put the object on and then lay something over the top of it under mm -hmm. that because I don't want anything sticking to my canvas. But and then I I you bet you bring this down very slightly. If you bring if you bring the height of the roller down too far, it ruins everything. It, that's another thing you just have to experiment with how how much pressure you want for each flower in there. Because if you do too much, you see it'll ruin the leaves or take out what you don't want. But this one's not been fired yet. But that's my next thought after I finish this up. But but anyway, yeah, here's a here's a leftover. There's a pod. But I didn't put a face on him. But I love these. But uh, these are pods that I collect. All right, and I use these in the clay. I used a lot of these out there when I did the fireplace installments. You see them out there, the mm -hmm. the tiles. Those were really used because I got ideas from them. Like the cap of the acorn, what I did was I just took my just my clay pieces and actually put it on top of the acorn. And then when you take it off, it leaves that beautiful cap. And you can actually then put it on top and use it. And I did a lot of things from these pods. Um, I saved my poppy pods. And from the poppy pods, I created these because this is the most unusual f factoring of a way to disperse seeds that I've ever seen because there's windows in here and this is hollow and I try to mimic because this is a study actually. These are studies of the pods themselves. It, I didn't use my imagination, but I would like to in the future maybe just use my imagination. But these are actually mimicking or trying to mimic the pods right here. And even the texture right here. If you'll see these little bands that hold the stem and connect, it's the same texture. But even the design on top. That's amazing, Rebecca. And I know it's not, a, I know other artists probably do a more perfect job, but this is my first try and I enjoyed doing it. But these are going to be mounted probably on another piece of clay and they'll go together, all of these forms that I've created, and it's going to be uh, just an exhibit type of pods. These, I use the rose hips and rose hips come at the end after the rose blooms and they get bigger and larger and they have the fanciest little stamens that go petals up but anyway there I created those and I had fun playing with the thinness of that because they break but these are will be placed together after I get them glazed they're going to be place where the forms lean into each other like that, I hope. 
But anyway, I have to make the clay for that, but they're so fragile. Um, all of these I got, this was, this is probably the most fun, but I grew snapdragons up in my window boxes this summer. And I had seen the seed pods from a snapdragon. They look like little skulls and they are amazing. Can you see those? The little skulls. Only you, Rebecca, would see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I thought, well, I'm going to see if this is really true. Do they really do that? So I left mine. I didn't pull them out of the window box. And sure enough, these are my seed, my little seed pods I grew from my own snapdragons. And I thought, well, I'm going to make that out of clay. That's just too cute. So there they are. There's my... Yeah. There's my little... snapdragon pods pod people and they're it's amazing how they actually do look like that and you're thinking that looks kind of scary but, so I've already got those glazed um, I made these from my okra pods that I grew looking in my garden so I use those there's all kind of unique pods with textures and I just enjoy that and the wheat makes a beautiful I've done it before so Henry gathered wheat for me because I couldn't find any around here but let's see this came from the fig the fig like you usually pick your figs but the pods sometimes lay flat and they have little seeds that break open inside if you don't get them It looks like it's going to speak. Yeah, I know with teeth. Yeah, these, I really enjoy doing these. Uh, there's three of these that will fit together. And they're pretty fragile too. And what are those? They came from the iris pods. The little oh, iris see. seed mm -hmm. pods. I see. And they, they're, of course, tinier than this, but they flick open and... Yeah, I grow, I had to observe those. Some of them now, you know, I think I do have one of those iris. Some of them, after a while, they want to deteriorate, but, but I've learned things that make the most beautiful kind of prints and things like that in clay. It just, it comes from a lot of experimenting and These are ferns, and I'm, let's see, I think I'm, I've got some, if I can walk over here, I'll put some in here. I found these growing in a colonization in the meadow just this week, and I thought, oh my gosh, that is going to be beautiful, and they make these pods right here. They, they make these pods, because I found some, but I'm pressing some right now. Aren't those pretty? And that's going to be, those would make some really pretty um, paintings. I've got, if you're going to use clay, clay though, clay flowers, you have to do them. You can't do them pressed and dried. They have to be live mm -hmm. because of the bulk of them. You yeah. know? But these are, <laughs> this is what I've been piddling with, like... These took so long, like this one took me like all afternoon just to, to create and make. And then I have to plan how it's going to... I talked to Gail yesterday and she said to build a, a flat platform and that way when the glaze touches both of them, it'll hold them both together because we have to think about how mm -hmm. you're going to mount them and that was an issue. So, so the glaze will hold them together. Right, and well, so you can see which ones go together. Mm -hmm. These go together. I thought I had three, but I guess I just have, yeah, I do, I do have three of those. And I'm in the process now of glazing these because they don't have to be just alike. 
but I do I do reference them and they don't have to you know the glaze doesn't have to look just like but for example with my rose hips that this gives me an opportunity to probably use some of my greens mm -hmm. and maybe a little blush is blush. that locust pod yeah well yeah it's a type of it was kind of smushed and all the leaves were broken off of one but yeah i put those little I thought that what was a lot pretty. of detail. Well, they go together though. See when it fits, when it did at one mm -hmm. time fit together, you can see how the seeds were all to together. They fitted in there. Right. But this was. I just found this one online. I thought it was so unusual. I just thought, well, I'm gonna just do that one. I don't know what it is, and I don't even think it grows here. But I loved the way they all they all formed together and had holes in there. You know, that reminds me of those uh, mushrooms that you find. They're charcoal looking, and brown. Mm -hmm. that... Mushrooms would be fun oh, to do in yeah, clay. Yeah, they really would, wouldn't they? That would be a glaze challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I think I could enjoy doing that. Well, that may be the next chapter. Yeah. Well, anyway, I was going to continue the pod series and, um, in different forms. Like some are three-dimensional, some are going to be like flat you know, yes. and work those, and then in my mind, just somehow have them exhibited together. I really don't know. I have to work that out, I guess, but I did some other other little things. This was something I enjoyed doing. I found this from um, the magazine that I, I take, um, a magazine that's a pottery magazine, and it's called A Flower Boat. <laughs> and actually, another artist got the idea and invented it and he was teaching people how to do it and I thought well, how cute he said he thought it was so unique because the water's inside the boat <laughs> so you put your water in here and these are the spouts that pour your water you can pour your water out and the flowers go here so is that an oriental style it is it's like a maybe a Japanese mm -hmm. type oriental and I follow an Ica, I love doing Ikebana bases and things like that too. So, yes, just I have so one beautiful. of your Ikebana bases. I love it. There's the little walnut. Did you know that the inside of a walnut makes a little owl face? <laughs> it's so cute. I've done that before. It looks like a little owl. But <clears throat> the black walnuts are textured, and so those will, those will fit together side by side like that. Well, it is owlish, isn't it? Mm-hmm. 